Cody Rhodes is reportedly on the list for WrestleMania 38. A top WWE star has been highly critical of his creative, and WWE's original plans for Ring of Honor, if they bought it, have been revealed. Stay tuned. So, a quote has been shared by Ringside News, who have been pretty on the ball lately. They were the first to break the Shane news. As, as always, take everything with a grain of salt. But the quote has been shared by uh, from a tenured WWE creative team member, stating, I know what's scheduled for Cody for Mania and that he's still on the list. If it's changed, no one has told us yet or corrected the internal documents. Cody, as of an hour ago, an hour ago when this quote was published, uh, still quite recent, still on the internal documents for WrestleMania. This totally contradicts a report that emerged, I think, just yesterday, saying yeah. the, the talks had fallen through. But as of now, Cody is still listed. Thoughts? Well, this, the, the thing is, if if Cody is heading back to WWE and if it is going to be, say, a big shock return at Mania, what you actively want right now as WWE is for people to think this is all falling through. Because if people anticipate him being there, yeah, it's still going to be fun and exciting, but it's not going to be, you know, that huge shock reveal if people are anticipating it. So I, it can kind of go one or two ways. I'm personally starting to feel more and more like Cody is going back to AEW or maybe just taking an extended break. But at the same time, you know, stranger things have happened. Stranger yeah. things have definitely happened. So it, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me at all if he is to turn up. And this definitely, as I said, you know, the, the other story that's doing the rounds is possibly helping WWE dispel a lot of the rumors that Cody's going there to allow the surprise to be more impactful. But at the same time, I just, I don't know, i got a feeling about it. But then again, because I feel that way, I mean, look at the John Moxley situation. It's probably going to be the opposite. So <laughs> get your hat ready. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked either way at this point. There's part hmm. of me, uh, I think I'm leaning like you more to him going back to AEW. But... If he does turn up at WrestleMania, what a moment! Like if you've oh, got yeah. the, especially yeah. if they do position him at the top of the card, their, if you've their got landmark event as well, like their yeah. big event. <laughs> if if you do Brock Roman, whoever goes over there, and I think it's probably Roman. But if Cody's music hit and there's just a mm. stare down at the end of Mania, I'd I'd be I'd be buzzing about. As that. long as it's still got the Snoop Dogg intro and the wrestling has more than one royal family, and there's like you know, it's like this huge shock return. But there's mm -hmm. a good three and a half minute wait before he emerges at the top of the ramp. Damn right. Slowly and then he's laid out by a, Knoxville. St slowly starts putting a throne together. Just very nice. gently. Yeah. I like it out of Lego. Yeah. Um, next up, uh, somebody who you you probably won't be seeing at WrestleMania. Uh, he teased he teased a return. He teased a new gimmick. He burnt his guitar and all that. We are talking about Elias, a source close to ringside news, saying that he is in creative purgatory. Uh, a tenured member of the creative team once again telling them that I don't remember the last night, uh, last time his name came up. It's been so long. He's just been totally forgotten about. He's somebody that fared very, very well on the main roster as well. I, I, how have you got nothing for Elias? I uh, don't. Rick Boogs I, has stolen his gimmick. Yeah, but He's got the, the guitar. The, you know, this is the thing. WWE. It's like you wait nine million years for the next Man Mountain Rock. And boom, two come along at once. But it, it's it's very very separate. And the Not idea Jeff was that Jarrett. Elias, <laughs> the Elias, <laughs> the idea you was that Elias was going to Jeff Jarrett was a fraud. Hon he didn't do any of his own man. music. You that was all. Man. <laughs> come on, honky tonk man. He couldn't play guitar. That's Greg true. Greg the Hammer true. Valentine could play better than honky. Is that right? <laughs> but I, you know. I, I thought that we were going to see a whole new Elias. There was rumor that he was going to cut his hair, that it was going to be a complete shift in tone. And I, nothing. Why? Why? How can you just be sat on this guy? Yeah, I, I, he's such a. I think he was he was really really like entertaining. I don't yeah, think he's like I, the strongest in the ring or anything. Hmm. But as far as like getting heat, winding a crowd up, getting, yeah. pro providing. Um, providing a catalyst for moments, I guess, because you, you can you can piss people off, and then somebody comes out and lays it lays them out. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I always found it very entertaining, personally. It's back and forth with Braun definitely yeah. comes straight away to mind. But it, on top of it all, though, it's like things like when he went and he did the the live set at Mania Weekend. Was it Mania Thirty mm Four -hmm. uh, in New Orleans? He went and did a live set and just committing himself to the character like that. I, I really liked Elias because it felt like he was really into it. So I, it's just well, a bit of a shame. Well, he's burned his character. It? 
It is, it is a bit of a shame. Also a bit of a shame. Um, Big E talking about his mm. WWE title reign. Something that I think most people can agree on was tremendously underwhelming. Big yeah. E deserved better. Um, and uh, he, he said... Uh, kind of that falling off a cliff feeling at the hands of Brock Lesnar and then suddenly it feels like you woke up a year prior and you're back to doing what you were before, uh, referring to the end of his title reign and how it wasn't that different to Kofi Kingston's run. Uh, and, and then he continued talking about his run with the belt. I wish it could have lasted longer. I wish we could have had the opportunity to do some more dynamic things. And I don't think it's really difficult Sorry, I, I think it's really difficult to latch on to a new champion when they have, within their first month, multiple losses on TV. Um, but again, we go down this path. Look, I really appreciate the people who support me and want better for me. I also want better for myself. And I guess I'll just leave it there. He was clearly quite upset about it. Um, yeah, and understandably so. Understandably, yeah. It, it's, it just felt very... And it shouldn't have at any in any way. Big E is one of the most dynamic performers, one of the most entertaining performers they've got. And he's certainly somebody that can just, you know, bring something from completely out of left field and and, and just embrace it and, and really run with it. Uh, you know, we see him do things like the New Year's Baby, all that stuff. And you just kind of give him a really general paint-by-numbers run and don't really do anything to bolster that general paint-by-numbers run and then take the belt off him. That's and it. And it was I just like... You you have such an interesting figure here, and you've done nothing with it. Yeah, it's it's nuts, isn't he? Because he's he's so charismatic. Yeah. Like he he's great on the like the press side of things as well. If you chuck Biggie in an interview with a major outlet, he's mm. going to make the company look great because he's he's just so entertaining. He's captivating. It is a shame, and I it's like when they when they had him lose multiple times, like straight away, right at the beginning of the of his run. Yeah. It's like. Why, why would anybody watching that, it, maybe if they weren't familiar with Big E, why would they want to invest in him? If it's That's a new it. viewer coming in, it's just like, oh, okay, your champion's just losing in like tags and uh, what? Yeah. Weird. Uh, well, I, I hope he realizes, I hope he realizes that it wasn't his fault in the, in the, in the yeah. words of Gene Snitsky. <laughs> Poor creative there hampered Big E. Big E did not hamper Big E. Um, next up, uh, WWE. Obviously, the news is broken um, this week. Tony Khan announcing that he has purchased Ring of Honor. Um, it was also revealed that WWE did have talks with Ring of Honor management um, back in 2018 when it was um, incredibly hot, hot period at the, at the time with... Um, uh, with various massive names there. Uh, they, they talked about buying it, but what they were going to do with the company is quite interesting because they weren't going to use it as like a secondary developmental. They were going to shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. All they wanted, <laughs> and it, it's not that surprising, right? Nah. All they wanted was the tape library because yeah. they had Owens in there, obviously, as, as Steen, Zane as Generico, Tyler Black. Uh, Brian Danielson, um, Claudio, like or loads and loads of their big stars. Um, that would be very, very useful for yeah, using documentaries and, and, and whatnot. Of course, it would also have the added benefit of killing one of NXT's competitors if they bought it and closed it down. So, 2018, NXT's yeah. biggest competitor. The hardcore yeah. fan base would then have to watch NXT, right? Yeah, because there's was nothing the else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but obviously that didn't happen. Now Tony Khan's got it. It is believed that it's going to be starting as a developmental for the AEW brand, which is pretty cool. And it's certainly a lot better than it being closed. Mm. It would have been a tremendous shame, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would have been a big, big shame. Um, and <laughs> another report here from Dave saying that if Triple H was still active with the company, the WWE would have definitely bought it. <laughs> um, this is not back in 2018. This is yeah. this is now. They they they're saying that they would have essentially, essentially pre prevented Tony Khan. <laughs> What's from Tony it. offering you? Five million? I'll offer you five million and one. <laughs> right. <laughs> one person with knowledge of WWE's attempting to buy the company said. Uh, smart move uh, regarding Tony Khan buying it. Even smarter counter move to WWE fumbling the ball on the purchase, which definitely would have happened had Paul Levesque not gone down. Uh, beside the complete mess that's happened to NXT, this is the first sign of Leve Levesque's absence. He would have pushed this through. He was flirting with the idea in 2018, and then Vince McMahon started thinking, let's buy New Japan. There's a story in itself. Hey, Adam, do you want to go buy Coca-Cola? I'm sure they'll just let us. Yeah, yeah. go on. Let's buy New Japan. Obviously, that never went 
anywhere either. So, uh, well, it looks like their eyes on on multiple companies. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they certainly, according to this report, at least the purchase of Ring of Honor would have gone through had Triple H been around. Uh, I, I miss his presence. You know, yeah. I, I know we, did, we didn't so. see him on on telly that often or anything. But you can you can feel his absence, can't you? Yeah, and I you know I I hope that one day he's going to be healthy enough to return because the the report the other day as well where it was like you know he might never be back. I, it, yeah. it just it made me feel really sad because he he's somebody who did so much for you know that that wave of uh, NXT that that first big drive of NXT and and everything with that you know the black and gold brand it. <sighs> It just, yeah, his his presence is very missed, and it feels like slowly it's being erased, in a yeah, way. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it's a real shot, and the talent loved him as well. Yeah, not just the backstage pointy photos. You you see video yeah. clips or you hear interviews with the wrestlers, and they're always so complimentary. Triple H really, really cared. He was so passionate about that brand, mm. and now with NXT 2.0, I don't know. It's just sort of there, isn't it? So yeah. I'm not saying that the wrestling's not good. I'm not saying oh, no, the wrestlers not aren't good. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's 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 missing a spark. It's missing something. It's missing. It Triple doesn't H. have that feel. Yeah, and I think it is very much Triple H's influence. There you go. There you go. We've got loads of content coming up. Uh, we got a list going up this evening. Um, tomorrow we have got a big roundtable discussion: WWE versus AEW, uh, which 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 Ross is is heading up there. That goes live at about one ish. We've got the true story of the curtain call, and then we've got one of our big old ranked lists. We are ranking quite appropriately every <laughs> NXT call up. Uh, it's about hundred and hundred and. <laughs> yeah, we, so we watched it through it's, yesterday. It's really good. Like, it's, um, it's, it's an well, you worked on it, Sam. Yeah. Of course, it's so really I, good. I'm going to say, uh, you know, those those yeah. those twenty points, especially in the middle, crack. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, but no, that's that's there. It's about an hour and a half long, so you can watch that uh, before Revolution live stream for Revolution. Then we got what happened at. Then we have um, the live review show at 1 p.m. on Monday. And then we've got WTF a little bit later. I think I've covered everything there. The predictions, Andrew and Ross um, uh, have done the predictions and they are on the channel right now. Pluggity plug, plug, plug. I've gone out of focus. And of course, we've got reactions to follow on the And we've got uh, reactions to Tuesday. follow on yeah. Tuesday. I knew I'd forgotten something. There you go. Uh, take care of yourselves. We will see you in a bit. Have a good weekend. Enjoy Revolution. All the best. Bye-bye.